Hey guys, welcome back to the garden after a couple of months. Um, I just really have not had time. We've been busy with many things, um, virtual school and just trying to keep work up during, you know, a pandemic that's still going on. But um, I have managed to get things mostly done for overwintering. So I'm just gonna show you what I have planted and then I'll take you into the greenhouse, which is finally done, which has really been taking up a lot of our weekend time. Um, so come on in. So here I planted some garlic. We built a new bed. Um, so the garlic is doing really well. I've actually never grown garlic before, so I'm excited to see how this turns out. Um, and over here I tried to plant some carrots in these bags like I did in the spring, but as you can see, like something's been digging the seeds out. So I have, you know, a few in here and I'll probably move these bags into the greenhouse and just let them go and see if they do anything. Um, I've got a bunch of turnips planted under here. Um, those are growing well. There's, I think, two different varieties in there. Um, and turnips are one of my favorite things, so I got, I don't even know how many varieties of turnips have come in the mail for me this year. Um, this bed was one of the earlier beds that I planted, which unfortunately it doesn't really look like it because it doesn't look like the plants are doing very well. Um, I did have a lot of bug damage. Um, as you can see here, a lot of like little um, caterpillars and then after they kind of went away because I did you know use BT um, for that which took care of them but then we started to get slug damage so um, I did cover them up but since I'm going to be putting plastic on everything I've taken all the mesh off and we're going to do that because it's going to be freezing um, some sometime this week it's going to we're gonna have an actual frost. We haven't had one yet. Um, but I have some cauliflower, some collards. Um, those are rutabagas over there. One rando carrot. Um, these are beets. And so I'm just gonna cover it up and like everything else that you'll see, I'm just gonna let it grow and I'll harvest it as I can um, for fresh food. I put some beets in here, but they are doing really, <laughs> they are looking very sad, so I don't know. I had a bunch of, um, that's where my Jerusalem artichokes have been for the last few years. So I don't know if anything's going to grow there for right now, but it's fine. Um, here I have some more collards and some topsoy, which I think is just so pretty. You'll see some bigger ones um, in another bed that I have. And then I've planted some more garlic here, just some random garlic. Um, in these guys, I popped in some radishes, so they look like they're growing okay, but we'll, I'll probably move all of these pots into the greenhouse as well. Um, in this bed, you can kind of see, you can see one little carrot. I, I pressed some carrot seeds into the ground and only had a couple come up so I just did another round maybe like three or four days ago so again just gonna cover it for the winter if things come up great if they don't then I'll I'll replant it in the spring um, this bed I'm actually not gonna cover because this um, red Russian kale and these are collards they will overwinter just fine um, at least if it's a regular winter, they will. Um, I did try to plant some lima beans, but I just, they're not doing a whole lot. We have a couple of lima beans here and there. Um, I just took up this whole nasturtium today. It was this beautiful like vining variety and we just ate it for lunch. So we just ate the leaves for lunch. Um, here I have these precious little zinnias that are I popped in like really late in the season so I just 
they're like the little cutest things in my garden right now. Um, here's some beets and some chard, some kale, um, some sorrel, and then some more beets down here. So they are finally, it took them a little while, but they're finally growing. Um, here's a different variety of kale. This is scarlet kale. You can see the slight difference there. Um, clearly this Napa cabbage had a lot of bug damage, but again, the bugs should be gone now. So, um, just gonna let it grow. And here, kind of the same thing, some, some beets. Um, I don't even know what that is, but it had a lot of bug damage too. And then down here, I have some different varieties of kale. Um, I just popped that one in today. And then... Here, I have, these are French breakfast radishes. I don't know if they're gonna get much bigger than this. I planted them when it was still pretty warm out, so I think that kind of affected their germination a little bit because they did really well in these boxes um, in the spring. So, I don't know about those. Um, here, I have some more kale some cauliflower um, again with the bug damage but you know they don't they're not gonna die so we're just gonna cover them up and then back here uh, see the bugs don't get this it's so which I'm so glad because it's so pretty this um, red leaf mustard I just love it so I'm gonna harvest a lot of that um, we had it for Thanksgiving one year the last time I grew it I have some more over here it's just so pretty, and so is this topsoil here. Um, I have a few of those. And then I have some more cauliflower in here. There's a couple different kinds. This is the last of my pepper plants. Um, I just brought in some of these shishitos, so there's some little tiny ones on here. And again, I'm just gonna let it go. So um, here some Hives. I have a ton. I have pulled off so many seeds from these, but here's so many more. So they just drop. As you can see, there's like chives all in my the path. Um, I did harvest some of the herbs from here. I do need to get some more lemon balm out, but I took up some oregano and some sage. They come back every year, so those are fine. Um, and then here is another kind of turnip. Um, these are the tokenashi turnips. That's what these all are. And then some, I think they're all the same. But so you can see the little, little baby heads right here. It's little baby turnips. So I'm just going to leave those for, let them get a little bit bigger. Most of them have two planted side by side so that when I take up one, the other one will then get bigger. Um, and here you can see some of the lima beans are trying to grow. So I don't know if they're going to survive the frost or not, um, but we will see. Back here, I ripped out like the trellis that was here. I'm not gonna keep it here next year. I planted, um, I really wanted to do some more flowers in the garden, so I planted some giant snowdrops um, and some Persian buttercups and some freesias back here, and then also some giant alliums. Um, so fingers crossed that the little creatures don't dig too many of them up. Um, here I have some fava beans or broad beans. Um, I haven't obviously staked them up, but we're going to see how they do over the winter. Um, I've got these planted in, I think, just two places. So I've never grown these before either. Um, here's some more lima beans up here. This is the last of my of my beans this year. Um, and then in this bed, I have um, 
the just the spring onions that they've been here for a couple years or longer than that they've been here for a few years and they always come back if I happen to get any at the store I'll just pop pop the ends in um, through here I planted Egyptian walking onions and those are starting to come up too um, those will overwinter and be ready for the spring um, here I have some more fava beans, which I'm going to try to support on this trellis um, versus the other ones. I'm just going to see how they do. Um, and then here's some thyme and some Vietnamese coriander, which I also harvested some of that and we ate that for lunch today. Um, here's some sad little peas that didn't really make it, but the frost will probably kill those. And then here's some collards that are looking nice and again I'm not going to cover those those will just stay as is and here's some some more collards as you can tell I love collards um these are we harvested the last of the beans today um and had those for lunch as well but I'm just going to kind of leave this um here's where the uh, cucamelons were and I'm hoping that the tubers stay in the ground and will come back next year. So I will just leave those. I'm just going to leave this whole trellis, actually. Oh, and here's some sad peas, too, that didn't really work out. I ate a couple of these fresh, um, you know, snacking just while I was working in the garden, but... The plant, obviously, you can see it's not doing very well, so I'll just take these off. Just let that die. And then the last bed that I have, I have some um, Chinese kale. Um, I honestly don't even know what this is. There's, there's a couple of them here, though, and it already bolted, so I'm just... I'm just gonna leave that. Oh, and here's a couple more fava beans. So we'll leave those two. But look at this, this beautiful color of this purple pak choy. I'm gonna let obviously let this grow, but I'm gonna plant more of that. I'm gonna start more of that for the spring because it's just so pretty to look at, and of course it's delicious. Um, but yeah, that's really all that's going on in the garden right now. I ripped out like a bunch of nettle from here um I just you can see the nettle back here it's just like it just takes over this whole area so I just don't need that much so we're gonna keep that um back as much as possible and then this guy just did not quit I mean you can see all the little flowers it was still blooming a few days ago here's a couple that are left and I I'm so glad this came back because this is a like a hummingbird sage that they just love it and I we definitely broke off a piece of it or like a really big piece of it <laughs> um, doing some work out here over the summer so it's still looking really good um, all right so now I'm gonna take you to the greenhouse it's so exciting <laughs> I've started to paint it, but we're not done yet. I'm painting my greenhouse green. And I just took this down. This is my gorgeous, like, gigantic, and look how much I got from it, this pineapple sage. So, I'm gonna dry this and then I can use it for tea um, and to just cook with. So in here, I've started a bunch of different things. I got some, some tatsua here, some um, Chinese cabbage, which this bug damage is from when they were sitting out on the table as seedlings. So not there's not been any bug damage, any further bug damage since they've been in here protected, obviously. So I've got some lettuce. Um, this is cabbage some radishes, some plum radishes that I just put in. These are some lettuce varieties. Um, 
Butter Crunch and Ice Queen that are supposed to be fairly cold hardy. Um, I got some more cauliflower here, some rutabagas, some snow peas, um, and then I have a bunch of seeds here, some turmeric up there. Um, I tried to pot a little piece of my pineapple sage. I don't know if it's going to work. Um, and then I started a bunch of like lettuce and spinach in these pots back here. And this is a pepino melon. It's supposed to be like it'll grow year round, but the only other time I've tried this plant was, you know, it just died in the winter, but it'll stay alive in um, tropical climate. So I'm just going to see if it'll live through the winter in the greenhouse. Um, there's some leeks back there, some more lettuce sprouts. Um, some turnips, some beets, some cabbage, broccoli, radish along the front, some cauliflower. These are turnips and more rutabagas and then some red mustard right there. And then some golden snow peas back there. Um, so this is all new to me. Um, I don't... I've never done this before, so I'm just hoping for the best. I did plant all um, frost tolerant varieties out here, so I'm hoping that um, it will grow and the disco ball will help it flourish. <laughs> um, so yeah, thanks for joining me.